Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Previously, we have talked about the type of grammars that can be parsed down. Um, we have discussed simple grammar and if you still remember, simple grammar has this form. On the left hand side, we have a single non-terminal and then on the right hand side, it starts with a terminal followed by a combination of terminal and non-terminal. We have also discussed quasi-simple grammar. In quasi-simple grammar, left-hand side starts with a single non-terminal and on the right-hand side, it follows the same rule as simple grammar. However, you can also have rules that can be derived to epsilon and this type of rule, we call it a nullable rule. Now, we will be discussing LL1 grammar. So LL1 grammar has this form. On the left hand side, there is a single non-terminal and on the right hand side, it can be a combination of both terminal and non-terminal, which means you can have rules that look like this. And you can also have rules that look like this where it starts with a non-terminal just like simple grammar and quasi-simple grammar we can construct a push down machine and also recursive descent parser for our ll1 grammar and we can use these parsers to check whether an input string is accepted or rejected by our LL1 grammar. However, LL1 grammar still needs to follow the rules that simple grammar and quasi-simple grammar have in the sense that if you have two rules derived from the same non-terminal, they must have disjointed selection set. Let's discuss more about LL1 grammar. Why exactly uh, does LL1 grammar call LL1? This is because the parcel will find a leftmost derivation when scanning the input from left to right and it will look ahead at only one input symbol. For LL1 grammar, we still need to find the selection set before we can construct the push down machine or recursive design parser. However, in LL1 grammar, there are 12 steps that we need to follow in order to find the selection set. Before we discuss all 12 steps, let's take a look at the grammar that we're going to use for the example. The grammar that we will use is grammar 15 where it have four rules and this is the dependency graph this dependency graph is um, a graph showing all the 12 steps that we need to take and how they are connected to each other okay let's start with the first step so the first step is to find nullable rule so nullable rule just like we have established in quasi simple grammar are rules that are derived to epsilon. So if you look at grammar 15, we notice that grammar uh, rule 3 is derived to epsilon. Therefore, we can write here that nullable rule is rule 3 and the nullable non-terminal is A. Why do we say that the nullable non-terminal is A? This is because A is the non-terminal on the left-hand side of rule 3. Okay, rule 3 is an obvious kind of nullable rule. However, we can also have non-obvious start nullable rule. So how uh, do we mean by that? So for example, if I have um, rule 5, and this rule 5 is B can be derived to A. What nullable rule 
basically means is it is like we can cancel the nullable non-terminal. So we have established here that the nullable non-terminal is A. So what if we cancel A on the right hand side of our grammar? So if you cancel A in rule 1, we still have BC. So this is not nullable. If you cancel A in rule 2, we still have B, which means this rule is not nullable. But uh, just now we added hypothetically if we have a rule 5. What if we cancel A in rule 5? Uh, it means B is derived to empty or B is derived to epsilon. And rule 5 is also a nullable rule in this situation and B is also a nullable non-terminal. So this is the non-obvious nullable rule and non-obvious nullable non-terminal. But of course, um, grammar 15 uh, does not exactly have rule 5. This is in a hypothetical situation. Okay, moving on to step Two. So if you look at this dependency graph, step 2 has an arrow coming in from step 1. So what this basically means is we need to consider um, things that we derive in step 1. And the things that we derive in step 1 is the nullable non-terminal and nullable rule, which is rule 3. Essentially, what's important is this, nullable non-terminal Okay, step 2 is BDW. So BDW means begins directly with. So to derive begins directly with relation, we look on the right hand side of our grammar and S begins directly with A. Okay, so I'm going to put it one by one. So S begins directly with A and then we have A begins directly with B. So A begins directly with B. Next, A cannot begin directly with epsilon so we move to the fourth rule. B begins directly with C. B begins directly with C. But remember this. Remember that we need to consider um, rule 1 or essentially consider non-terminal A. So we have established previously that uh, when we have a nullable non-terminal, it is like we can cancel the non-terminal from our grammar. So imagine if we cancel A here. So once we cancel A, A no longer is the first non-terminal on the right hand side. Therefore, S can also begin directly with B. So we need to include this S, B, D, W, B inside our B, D, W relations. And then if we cancel A over here, A still begins directly with lowercase b, and that's it. So we have four relations under BTW. Okay, now let's move to the third step. So in this third step, if you noticed, um, it is connected with step 2. You have an arrow coming in into step 3 from step 2 and we have a star on top of it. But this basically means is step 3 which is BW is a reflexive transitive closure operation of BDW. So we have derived this BDW in the previous step. So um, let's start with finding the reflexive transitive closure of this. So first I'm going to list out all the relations from BDW. So I will have SBWA, SBWB, ABWB, and BBWC, and I'm going to um, label this as 
from BDW. Okay, next I'm going to find the transitive um, property from this. Okay, because I have SBW A and I have A but BW B, therefore I'm going to have SBW B. Next, because um, I have SBW capital B and I have BBW lowercase c, um, I will have SBW c. And these are the two uh, relations um, from the transitive property. I'm going to label this as transitive. Next, I'm going to derive the reflexive property of um, our BW and I'm going to start with S. Okay, because I have S, therefore I'm going to have SBW S. Then because I have A, I will have ABW A. Because I have B, I'm going to have BBW B. I have lowercase p, which means I will have its reflection. I have c, therefore I have c, p, w, c. And then, if you notice, in our dependency graph, there is a um, plus lowercase t. What this means is, in bw step, if we have a terminal inside the grammar, not listed here or here, we still need to include its reflection in the reflexive property. So, for example, if rule 4 here is B derived to CD. So, this is an example in grammar 15 that is not exactly like this. So, if rule 4 is B can be derived to CT, I would need to include D, B, W, D in the reflexive property even though it is not derived here. Okay, but of course this is just an example. We don't really have this. So before I forget, I'm going to label this as reflexive. Moving on, the next step is step 4. So in step 4, we are finding the first of all symbols. So step 4 is the first of all symbols. So all symbols would mean both non-terminal and terminal. So I'm going to start one by one. First S. So we are finding uh, the set of first S. To find that, uh, we'll be referring to BW because if you noticed um, for step 4 there is an arrow coming in from step 3 which means it is related to step 3 and this is uh, the step 3 relations we have derived in the previous step. To find the set of first S we look on the left uh, part of relation and we will choose the one that begins with S only so it would be uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there are five that begins with S. And from these five, we're going to choose the one that has terminal on the right side. So, this is not a terminal. This is a non-terminal. So, we are not choosing this. Same goes to this. B is a non-terminal. However, this two relation, lowercase b is a terminal, lowercase c is a terminal, uh, s is a non-terminal. So we are not choosing this. We are only choosing these two. Therefore, the set of first s will include b and also c. Okay, that is how we derive first S. So let's remove this writing first. And then we need to find 
first A. So we will repeat the same process whereby we are choosing the relation that have A on the left side and we'll choose the one that has terminal on the right side. Therefore, first A will include B. Okay, moving on. First B. Okay, so to find first B, look at relation that has B on the left side and has terminal on the right side. So first B will have um, C. And the set of first B has only one element, which is C. And then first B, because remember, we are finding the first of all symbols. So for first B, it will be this one here. And the first C is a set with a single terminal, which is C. So we are done with finding the set uh, the f of all symbols. The first S, A, B, lowercase B, and lowercase C.